اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم hypothesis the singular is hypothesis if it's more than one then are you obviously right hypothesis so what is hypothesis and why is it so important in research hypothesis is referred to as an educated guess it can refer to as a proposition as well it is a logically conjectured statement that establishes rather that proposes relationship between variables or constructs so a hypothesis is a educated guess or it is a proposition or you can call it a logically conjectured statement that proposes a relationship between variables now why do we need hypothesis when we have already written the literature hypothesis provide a more conclusive concise description of what you want to test for example i have written a literature that is maybe one page or two page length well after reading the literature i need to make sense out of that literature i need to make a point out of that literature i need to clearly elaborate as to this is what i want to do this is what i want to say i can, if you've written literature and you haven't given the hypothesis the reviewer will ask what is it that you want to test what is it that you want to propose what is it that you want to check what is it that you want to relate so your clarity of argument culminates into your hypothesis there are two types of hypothesis you might have heard about it you've got a null hypothesis and then you've got alternate hypothesis now in in business research what we do is we obviously report our alternate hypothesis now what is null hypothesis null hypothesis means that you are proposing no relationship or no difference so what do you mean by no relationship or no difference you are just going to talk about it in a minute and in alternate you are saying, saying there you are saying that there are relationships or there are differences now both of them are just the opposite of each other let's say let me give you an example of a hypothesis it is raining outside now this is a statement this is a statement that can be now an a hypothesis has to have two characteristics So what are the characteristics of hypothesis It has to be testable and it has to be predictable Now if it is not testable that is you cannot test it or if you cannot predict it this means that your hypothesis is not correct your hypothesis is wrong Let's say this is my hypothesis although this is not how you write your hypothesis in research but just for the sake of understanding let's say this is my hypothesis it is raining outside is this statement testable yes it is testable you can just like move the curtain from your window and just look outside if it's raining obviously it's it's raining your hypothesis is accepted if it's not it is not is it predictable yes it's predictable you do not even need to move the curtains just by sitting in your office or in your at your house you would know you would you can predict is it is it raining outside yes it could be raining outside no it could not be raining outside so this is the characteristic of hypothesis but let's say let me give you a proper hypothesis so let's say i say that 
सेल्फ esteem i want to check self esteem i want to check self esteem in let's say male and female now when i say i want to check for self esteem in male and female this means i want to assess whether self esteem differs between male and female so what will be my hypothesis my hypothesis will be there is a there is let's say no difference in self esteem between male and female respondents now look at this this is my hypothesis and which hypothesis is this this is null hypothesis this is h not shown by a not this means there is no significant difference in self esteem between male and female respondents this is actually differential hypothesis because you are checking differences in a variable so it's called differential hypothesis and when you say no difference this means that the self esteem of male and female is equal now what is the alternate hypothesis for this one shown by h1 or you can also write ha so there is a significant difference in self esteem between male and female respondents so there is a significant difference in self esteem between male and female respondents now you can this look at this hypothesis this is this hypothesis here h1 is the opposite of this hypothesis which is your null hypothesis so there is a significant difference this is your alternate hypothesis and there is no significant difference this is your null hypothesis you do not need to test both of them obviously if you test this one you are also testing this one at the same time if this one is rejected obviously this one is accepted if this one is not supported obviously this one is supported so it's the same thing so if this one is rejected then obviously this one is accepted if this one is not supported then obviously you are finding support for this one so they are mere opposite of each other but in social sciences and management research we present this hypothesis of ours we present the alternate hypothesis now look at this this was checking for differences now let me give you another example let's say you've got a variable information quality and perceived usefulness now in this case how will i write my hypothesis h not there is no significant impact of information quality on perceived usefulness now this is my null hypothesis because what you are doing is you are saying there is no significant impact impact signifies relationship so the words could change it could be impact it could be influence what will be my h1 here just the mere opposite of it let's say there is a significant impact of information quality on perceived usefulness now let me give you another example what if you've got moderators in your study how would you write that particular hypothesis let's say i've got a variable information quality and this is my moderator i've got another variable let's say perceived usefulness and that's my iv i've got another variable benefits and that's my d now the relationship between this iv and this dv is being moderated by this third variable information quality now moderator what happens is that moderators actually strengthen or weaken or sometimes change the existing relationship 
between the variables now in this case information quality is obviously we propose that it is moderating the relationship between this and this so how do we write the hypothesis information quality moderates the relationship between perceived usefulness and benefits but this is not enough writing that information quality moderates the relationship between these two variable is not enough you have to explain how it moderates so what you do is you write such that improved information quality strengthens the positive relationship between perceived usefulness and benefits so what happens is that your information quality here this variable here is moderating the relationship between perceived usefulness and benefits how come how is it moderating it's moderating like that if information quality improves this actually strengthens the already positive relationship between perceived usefulness and benefits now let me give you another example of moderator where the moderator is weakening the relationship let's say you've got a variable called knowledge hiding and this is a moderator and what it does is it moderates the relationship between these variables so how do we write this particular hypothesis similarly you can write knowledge hiding moderates the relationship between perceived usefulness and benefits such that high level of knowledge hiding obviously the wordings will change to go with the moderator weakens the positive relationship between perceived usefulness and benefits so now your knowledge hiding variable is moderating the relationship between these two variables but how what's the role of this knowledge hiding variable as a moderator that if it's high it weakens the positive relationship so this is how you write about your moderator and the moderating hypothesis you will have to explain how it moderates rather than just writing that it moderates okay now moving on let me give you now this was this was differential hypothesis this was simple plain direct relationships this was about moderators but you also have sometimes mediators in your model so how do you write the mediating hypothesis so let's say i've got three variables here information quality perceived satisfaction and benefits so what i propose is that information quality affects perceived satisfaction and perceived satisfaction affects benefits so instead of information quality affecting benefits directly the effect is transmitted through this other third variable called perceived satisfaction now how do you write a hypothesis like this when you've got a chain of relationship or when you've got mediators perceived satisfaction mediates the relationship between information quality and benefits 
simple enough. You just need to write your mediation hypothesis like this. That perceived satisfaction mediates the relationship between information quality and benefits. What you are trying to say is information quality has an indirect effect on benefits through perceived satisfaction. Now look at this. This is your alternate hypothesis. This is not your null hypothesis. This is your alternate hypothesis because you are saying that yes, there is moderation. Yes, there is mediation. Yes, there is a moderator. Yes, there is a relationship. So when you've got or when you are expressing that yes, there are relationships. Yes, there is moderation. Yes, there is mediation. What you are saying is that this is my alternate hypothesis.